if I spit on it a little bit, could I put, fucking put my penis inside of those flaps and how would it feel? Would it feel very much like a human vagina? This is the Violent Professional Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Violent Professional Podcast. I'm your host, Whiskey Mike. I know you're asking yourself, it's like, why the fuck did you do that intro? Well, I feel like I should be a little bit more professional with this podcast game, especially since I'm, I like it a lot, you know. I do like it. I like it a lot, and uh, I hope you guys like it, too. I had a lot of good com- comments on the last episode, um, which is weird because I, I always assume that you guys want to hear something certain but it it always changes the last one i just talked and everybody was like that was cool um not everybody i'm sure some of you were like that was super fucking lame what you said like everything every word uh but there was there was a bunch of you that went out of your way to hit me up to let me know what you thought about it which is more than i usually get a lot of times all i see is that there's people um you know, responding to the, the episodes by comments and likes, that's it. Um, or listens or downloads, you know, if you're listening to this right now, you'd help me out by downloading, hit download. That's a thing that they do with podcasts and it seems to help out people. I don't know if this is super echoey. It sounds super echoey, but Hey, um, if it is, I'm sorry. I try my best. I try my fucking best. I try my best every day, but sometimes it's just not good enough. But all we got is tomorrow. We try again. Try, try again. I'm a little bit distracted by the Discord room right now. Anyway. um, So, yeah. Welcome to the Vala Professional Podcast. If this is your first time listening or tuning in, I feel extremely sorry for you. But my, I go by the name uh, Whiskey Mike. That's my fucking DJ name on the weekend when I'm uh, DJing at gay clubs. Um... You know, if uh, if you're here and you're listening, please subscribe to this podcast so that even if you hate it, you can, you know, know every time I speak or put an episode out and then you can be like, I hate it even more. And you can just tune in and fucking hate it all the time. You know, get in that psychotic mode of just following just to hate, just so you can shit post. If you want to do that, do that too. Uh, but yeah, subscribe, hit the buttons that say subscribe or whatever it is on your respective podcast listening platforms or whatever video thing you're listening on, if you're watching on, if you're like on Instagram or some shit, hit subscribe on this, follow, I think it's called. And on Facebook and all these places, you can search us out. We're the only fucking Vaughn Professor podcast uh, this side of the Mississippi or the this side of Claremont, Wyoming. We're not based out of Wyoming, so don't get it twisted, you know. And uh, just to pay some of the bills here, if, if you know, you support this podcast, if you listen for any, any time, please go support our sponsors. We got a few of them. We've got Strike Force Energy. We've got Uncana. We've got Ping Pong Tactical. You know, there's codes for that shit. You can listen to the fucking, you know, look in the comments or the fucking description. You'll see the discount codes or go to our website, violentprofessional.com. You'll get it there. You can get all the discounts, all of, all of the discounts. By subscribing, at least, it helps us out. It helps us grow. It helps fucking more people hear about us. You could share our content. You could do all that shit. But anyway, I'm not going to ramble on more than I already am or that I'm already going to do because it's time to release the Kraken! Oh, yeah, I just released it, and it feels so good in the fucking skull cup. Watch it go down into the mug. Look at it. Got this skull cup from Walmart. It was nice. It was $3. I liked it. I saw it. I saw it. I was I was shopping for fine home furnishings, and I saw this skull mug. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to hold it. I grabbed it really weird, so my hand's all cattywampus. And it's fucking, it's really hard to hold it up. But anyway, look at it. It's cool. I think so. Maybe not the contents, and some of your fucking, some of your attitudes suck about what I'm drinking here. Heard all about that, too. There were two... Two types of comments I got on the last episode. One of them was, hey, dude, great job. You're fucking awesome. You're killing it. Keep it up, bro. And I was like, damn, son. That's dope as fuck. Thank you. And then also they're like, 
But hey, why the fuck are you drinking Bud Light? If it wasn't enough that I get shit talked by drinking Coors Light, now you come at me for Bud Light? You know, I thought I'd just switch it up. You want to know what the fucking deal is? The elephant in the room is. I just decided to change it. Fucking elephant. Oh, where'd you switch to Bud Light? Why do you fucking jerk off? What, what the fuck does it matter? What are the, I understand what I just said has nothing to do with anything, but why do you do anything you do? Because you want to? Just let me fucking be, all right? I just want to do things. There's no reason I switched. Other than, like, I, I saw an ad that said, like, Coors Light had corn syrup. <laughs> and this advertises, like, water, rice, and barley, and fucking hops. It's super fucking hobby. <laughs> it's not, though. It's just light beer. You know, it's light beer. Because, you know, my chains raise a thin and my beer's light here. <laughs> I don't know. Because my chain right. <laughs> Fuck. My chains raise a thin like beer in my cup and my sweater on turtle in the neck on puff. Huge turtle neck, beer light all night, I won't say it again. Oh, I like light beer. Can you just fucking shut up already? God damn. I've heard it for years since I've been doing social media and putting myself out there in the fucking the internets. Heard all about it. It's like the one thing. It's like, oh, what are you going to talk about my light beer? You all drink light beer too. Why don't you fucking suck a cock and get the fuck out of here? Especially if you're sucking cock. I don't want to see that shit. But go do something else. Stop worrying about what I'm drinking. <laughs> What's next? You're going to make fun of my fucking hatchback? God damn it. I just opened myself up for that. Fuck. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the elephant in the room is that I st I'm drinking Bud Light on a fucking thing. Why isn't it good? Why is it good enough for Post Malone? And you you fucking people go out and you're like, oh, Post Malone's getting it? Posty's getting it? Well, I'll go get the fucking Bud Light seltzer. Like, that's not fucking worse, you fucking weirdos. That's the thing I don't understand. People talk shit and they're like, I drink IPAs. David, I drink IPAs. Oh, I'm so fancy. Look at me, and I adjust my time. Oh, I am fucking drinking IPA. You fucking low-life piece of shit drinking light beer. Fuck you. You're the same motherfuckers that go from fucking IPAs, the most bitter, fucking nasty, earwax-tasting piece of shit fucking beer fucking made by hipsters in the Pacific Northwest, to fucking seltzer. So what the fuck are we talking about here? Don't come at me with that shit. You know? I don't talk to anybody about their fucking alcohol consumption other than IPAs because it's trendy and you're a fucking weirdo if you drink shit because it's trendy and you like to fucking... Ooh, look at me! Like, that's the only time. It's like, when you do something for a specific thing, it's kind of like everything happening these days. The tribal shit. Oh, I'm a part of the fucking IPA tribe. Ooh. It's made with fine salmon fish oil. Like, f who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, shut the fuck up and just drink what you like. And goddamn it, party. If you're gonna do anything, party. But if you're not gonna party, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? All right, so I've addressed it. You know, I just want to do it. So get off my fucking sack already, all right? I'm gonna drink it. Is that okay? Is it okay if I do something that I want to do? Oh, God. Oh, no, God forbid I do something I want to do. Fuck, it tastes delicious. Tastes goddamn delicious. And that leads to me, it leads me to my first important part of this fucking episode is stop caring what people think about what you say. <laughs> Seriously, and this goes with some of the shit. It's like, oh, God damn it. Um, I was watching a Joe Rogan podcast episode and he was, I think it was like, it was like a clip on YouTube or something. Cause he's on Spotify, much like we are subscribe on Spotify. We're there too. We don't get paid a hundred million dollars to do it. We just did it for free because we love you. Um, but he was on there talking about movies and, uh, super bad. How you couldn't make that movie today. You're, you're how you couldn't make certain movies today and all this stuff. Um, and how, well, you could, but you'd be scrutinized and you'd lose your sponsorships and you'd lose this and that and stuff like that. And obviously he's on a different level altogether, so he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Um, 
and I'm not talking shit about him. I'm just saying like that's that idea of like you can't do something. You can't make a fucking movie like super bad or you can't make any movie that's controversial or whatever. Uh why? I think like and even saying stuff like people guard th- their words and shit like when they s- say anything. The I mean in we're you're in America. Like the the first amendment exists and it doesn't matter how much they try to fool you and make you think it doesn't fucking exist or it's going away. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> At least anytime soon. Um it's it boils down to there's a lot of fucking uh, weak people because it's weak times right now. Everyone thinks that uh, the coronavirus was so hard. And I'm, to some respect, some of it, like the pandemic was hard for some of you. I'm sure of it. Hard for a lot of people. It's hard for me. But in different ways, like hard, like soft times create soft men. Hard times create hard men. You know what I mean? So go back to fucking World War II, World War I. Those were some hard motherfuckers, right? And they were our grandparents or our great-grandparents, so on and so forth. And they lived a different life, and they they went to war, didn't fucking talk about it, came back. You know, they came back, didn't talk about it. They just went back to work. And those are some hard fucking people, right? Um. Now, these days, because of those the sacrifice of those people and even my generation in the fucking global war on terror, um, there are some sacrifices made there, too, but to secure comfortability in society because comfortability is awesome. I like sitting on my couch, too, and fucking watching Netflix. That's fucking dope. I don't want somebody busting in my door and just punching me in the face or shooting up my family. That's not what I want. Uh, so comfortability is awesome, but... It, and it, But I will say that times are easy, regardless if we're going through a pandemic or not. Times have been been across the globe, I'd say, with the exception of certain places, like you could look at Israel right now and Palestine and all those places. Times are easy in the United States. And I think we a lot of people are bored because of it, and they create a lot of drama and a lot of bullshit and a lot of strife and... I'm mad at this, and you said that. Oh, my God, you can't say that. But the thing is, you can say that. You can say that. You can say all of it. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Every word you can say. Every word that they say you can't say, you can fucking say it. It all all depends on if you want to. You make the decision if you want to say it. You don't let other people make that decision for you because they scream and yell and say this and that. But I feel like the more that... We, and people in general, I'm not saying me and you, the one person that's, that's watching this, I'm saying we as people in America with this fucking right to say whatever the fuck we want, regardless of the fucking feelings of people, you know, to some extent, you can't, obviously you can't scream fire in a crowded theater. That's the one they go for. Um, you know, you can't get people to commit violence through your words. Like, actual violence. Not the fucking made-up shit that they want to say. Like, oh, those words are violence. Oh, it hurts so bad. You know, but um, it's your decision to stop saying it. It's your decision. It's your decision to say you can't make a movie like that these days. You'd get scrutinized. Who fucking cares? The more people that have that mentality of you'd be scrutinized if you did that today, the weaker and weaker and weaker we become till we're not even able to say anything. And it's funny, a lot of these proponents of free speech will go like, oh, you know, they'll say that kind of stuff like free speech exists and blah, but you can't, you know, some of these things, you just got to watch what you say. You'll be scrutinized and blah, blah, blah. And I think part of the problem is, and especially with celebrities and all these people that, that say this stuff is they never, they don't have a backfill if they get shut down or whatever, like their sponsors throw them away or they stop sponsoring them or what have you. And it's because they put themselves in a position and obviously a lot of them are making millions of dollars and they're doing well. And so they've got, you know, like any job, any job, you got to kind of work with your boss, but at the same token, on the same token, uh, the, it, they're independent type of individuals usually that fucking get paid 1099 or whatever. They're not like 
Burger King employees, you know what I mean? They're making money and having to claim it independently through their tax returns. But um, to some respect, they should be setting themselves up to never be able to be blocked. Like there's ways to do it these days. You could have a self-sustaining type of income without any sort of need for sponsorship whatsoever. You know, unless it's like Strike Force Energy and, and fucking Ping Pong Tactical and Uncana and, you know, Robin Hood that I uh, give you the code and you get fucking fuck Robin Hood, actually. Fuck them. Fuck Robin Hood. You know what I mean? I'm going to talk about that for a second. They're not a sponsor of the podcast, but I have a link on the website. You can go there and like sign up and then uh, there's some benefit to it. Like I get I get. Uh, stocks and then the people that sign up get stocks everybody gets stocks everybody gets fucking stocks you get 10 for ten dollars of free fucking stocks everybody signs up but for me i put that code on my website because people can go there and fucking sign up and then i get fucking free stocks and then i just change it into whatever stock i want i sell whatever the fuck it is like they had some fucking weird like weird shitty uh mobile home fucking real estate company that i got one time and i was like nope <laughs> like threw that and got ethereum or something like that um, let me go back real quick. So just to touch on it and then I'll get into the crypto and fucking stocks and stuff that I want to actually talk about in this, this fucking episode. Um, the more people that do that shit and the more in the fucking whatever, the easier it is for the people that scream and yell and cry about the, the fucking, uh, oh, words, and I know this isn't a new subject, but it's just like the people that are like at the top that preach about free speech, they actually have to fucking live that fucking thing and go, you know what I mean? Like set yourself up essentially. And I'm not, I'm speaking to whoever I'm speaking to, not like to millionaires or whatever, but like you as a listener, if, if you're in a position or an influencer in some way, um, probably have a, you know, an ability to not get fucking canceled. If you're in like any sort of, uh, you know, position where you talk to people or like you're out, you know, even this podcast, like have, set yourself up. So if people try to cancel you or whatever for things you say, cause I get a lot of horrible shit on this podcast from previous episodes, but set yourself up. So you're not reliant on fucking sponsors. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can't be canceled. Oh no, my sponsor dropped me. Like set yourself up, be smart with your money, be smart with your finances be smart with how you live your life and financially and don't just have one source of income like diversify your bonds son um so anyway getting on uh crypto and whatnot because it's a hot topic right dogecoin all that stuff um i i want to talk about this because it's near and dear to my heart uh lately i uh a lot of the stuff i do when i'm not working is i sit in front of a computer and i buy and sell stocks um, mostly I just buy them. I don't sell them because the way I do things, and let me preface all this by saying I'm not a financial vi financial advisor, so don't take anything I say uh, and model your portfolios if you have them. Um, after what I'm saying, because I'm a fucking idiot, and I just, I have a spreadsheet that I developed that kind of fucking helps me, it helps guide my decisions when it comes to buying stocks and whatever. Um, so damn, these fucking flies are trying to get in my Bud Light. Must be because it's delicious. You got these little fruit flies, fuckers. Um, so Dogecoin, that's a hot topic. We'll get into it because I can clip this up and make it into a fucking YouTube thing and then it'll get people to follow the podcast. Um, Dogecoin is, if you haven't heard of it, you probably haven't looked at any of the fucking news or things that Elon Musk says or whatever. And why the fuck would you? Who gives a fuck? But Dogecoin recently, within the past few months, has come into the limelight of fucking uh, popular culture, so to speak. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a uh, tale of when exactly I bought into it because it was much sooner than all of you listening or uh, much earlier, much earlier. Maybe not. Maybe some of you bought it earlier. Maybe some of you bought more than I did. Um, so in around August of 2019, anyway, sorry, I get 
all over the place. Dogecoin is a popular thing. You can Google it and figure out what's happening with it. It's fucking skyrocketing and it's only a few cents, right? Like it's only like 50 some odd cents right now at the time that I'm recording this episode. But, and that seems insignificant, but it doesn't seem insignificant to people like me that invested way, way before everybody else. <laughs> um, so in about 2019, 2019, before all this GameStop shit and this Wall Street bet stuff ever fucking happened this past year because everybody's bored and coronavirus. Um, let me get a sip of this bill. In August of 2019, I invested in a shit ton of fucking Bitcoin. Or not Bitcoin. I'd be loaded. Shit ton, shit ton of Dogecoin. Um, and I did this not because anything was telling me to do it, but I was looking on an app known as Robinhood, uh, and they had a bunch of things on there. One of those things was Dogecoin. I saw a little bit about it in the media, and people like were fucking making fun of it or whatever. It's like a meme coin that popped up a few years ago, a few years prior to that. Um, and I was looking at how it fluctuates day in and day out, and I was like, looking at my buddy and I was like, I was in the middle of the desert in Arizona sitting on a fucking hill with, uh, next to him. We were just fucking talking and we're like, I was like, Hey dude, we could throw some money at this. Look at this thing. It just bounces by fraction of a cent, like up and down all fucking day. You could throw in at the fucking bottom. You could throw in a couple hundred bucks. And then by the end of next week, we could have 400 bucks. So essentially we both put in, a few hundred bucks thinking like, Oh, we're going to double our money. So I put in about 400 bucks and, uh, roughly got a hundred thousand dollars or not a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand doge coins. Um, and at the time it was like, cool. You know, I got it at point zero zero one nine, less than a penny. And I thought nothing of it really. And so, through the course of the week, we were hanging out, talking about it, and we're like, oh, it's up and down and whatever, and wasn't really doing much. And so over time, I just forgot about it. And then I'd look at it every so often, and it'd fluctuate and whatever. And then for some reason, over 2020, everybody's real bored, and they start finding out about Dogecoin, and it starts going up by, like, a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean, it's not even a penny yet. And so then it keeps fluctuating, keeps fluctuating, and nothing really fucking occurs, but I'm like, yeah, it's up at a thousand dollars right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was like, that's fucking cool. And then it'd go down and down and then whatever the, um, so then eventually the fucking, uh, GameStop shit happens. Right. Uh, that's this year. And then after that, you know, and you can look up the GameStop too stuff too. Personally. And this is just me personally. A lot of people are like investing in GameStop even to this day. And it's like, yeah, it's cool that fucking Wall Street bets pushed it up, but really it's a it's 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 silly. It's a dying fucking thing, right? And you could look at Dogecoin and say that's silly too because it's worthless. Uh it's got an endless supply of of they can mine as many as they want for eternity and but then Everyone kind of avoids the subject about Ethereum. It's the same fucking thing. Bitcoin is literally one of the only ones that there is a end of the supply. You can't keep mining it. But everything else, just fucking mine it. And I don't know how that process goes. I'm not a fucking expert on crypto. But a lot of people like to talk shit about Dogecoin and say it's not real and all this other stuff. But it's all fucking fake. Even fiat currency, which is a term that I learned three months ago that fucking buddy's called fiat currency. Everybody says shit trying to be fancy and they just learned it on Wikipedia. Fuck you. It's cash money, bitch. You know? Cat, fuck, you think Wu-Tang Clan was singing about fucking fiat currency? Get fucked. Fiat currency rules everything around me. Fiat cream, get the money. No, it's not that. It's cash rules everything around me, fuckers. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Fiat fiat rules everything around me. Fuck you. You never heard fiat crypt fiat. That's a thing that people do. They like to sound fancy as fuck and go, oh, you've never heard of fiat? Fiat currency? Fuck you. Fuck you. It's cash and dollar bills, bitch. 
No, I never heard Fiat up until fucking a few months ago. The closest I heard of Fiat was a fucking car from Europe. Bunch of assholes trying to be all fancy. It's the same people that fucking talk about, oh, the book was better. Fuck you. <laughs> Fiat currency. And it might be called that. It might have been called that forever. I never heard that. But that's fucking dumb. That's some fucking foo-foo shit right there. Fiat currency. What are you what are you trying to do? You're trying to position yourself uh, intellectually above me? Well guess what? You didn't really have to try that hard. Fiat currency. Fucking suck a cock, you dumb fucks. Everybody who like just learned about fiat the term fiat currency. Or whatever the fuck it is, fiat, <laughs> like uh, fiat recently, and they're like trying to act like, oh, I do that forever. Like, what kind of fucking bullshit? That's such a fle. I'm flexing on you intellectually. Get the get fucked. Get fucked. You're as dumb as the rest of us. Fiat currency, fucking suck a dick. Anyway, um, so long story short, I got a shit ton of fucking Dogecoin. I got a shit ton of it. And it's fucking shooting to the moon, dude. Shooting. Um, and, yeah. Uh, everybody that was talking shit about it, I could literally take that fucking Dogecoin and buy a fucking house with it. And especially that they announced, um, they announced that, uh, this app known Coinbase, known as Coinbase, is now going to have it in the next two months. They're going to have it as one of their they're fucking coins they support. Because right now, you can go on Coinbase and you can't... Which is an app that's actually like a crypto wallet. Where it's an act... It's like you actually own the crypto as opposed to Robinhood, like... Which I have Dogecoin on. It's... um, It's... You can't do shit with it. Like, you're buying it, but somebody else owns it or some shit. But you can't do anything with it. Like, you can't... It's actually like... That's why I, that's why I think a lot of people think that it's garbage. Because you can't use it to buy anything. You can't fucking transfer it to other cryptos. It's You can buy it and sell it and show people that you have this amount. Like, I could show people the numbers on the fucking screen that, oh, look at this much. But realistically, it's nothing. Like and, and people are right about that if you buy it on Robinhood. But if you buy it, when it comes to Coinbase, you actually have your unique fucking uh, crypto wallet that you could actually transfer it into other cryptos. You could use it to pay your buddies when you get beer. Uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a game changer. I think like now, you know, uh, recently, like everybody in my friends group or in my circle n know I had it. And a lot of people bought it because they saw that when it went from like 0 0.001 to like four cents. And I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> like, um, everybody was like, holy shit, you weren't fucking lying. And, uh, so then a lot of people jumped on board and then this past few weeks has been nuts with it. Um, and I was telling people when it got to like 40 cents, I was like, I don't, I don't know if it's a good idea because like you'd have to throw in a shit ton of money to actually make anything that's worthwhile. Cause I don't, when I do investments, I don't look at like, like if I'm doing stocks and whatever, that's a different thing. But like with crypto, it's like, I got to have like a massive yield to even bother with it. So like I look for really cheap cryptos or Ethereum that is actually something that has more value and you can use it to purchase stuff and Bitcoin and whatnot. I don't have any Bitcoin, but like, you know what I mean? Like there, uh, I look, I have a few cryptos that are actually like the main ones. And then I've got other ones like all oh, this bullshit. <laughs> like, that's just really cheap. And I try to get a quick, but quick buff buck on it. Um, Dogecoin's the most successful version of what I've been doing with crypto crypto, like actually Dogecoin, uh, brought me into even trading stocks. So um, I won't get into my portfolio because I don't want to give advice on what you should get. But what I will say is that what I do personally is I have a few things that I fuck around with. Like Dogecoin was one of them. I don't really fuck with it though because now it's real. Um, and But my stocks, I am the type of investor now that I I don't really day trade. I've seen a lot of my friends and a lot of people, including myself in the past, get in trouble with day trading. Like, um, you know, there's the thing that panic I've been posting on uh, stories about panic selling because a lot of people will fucking see that the, sh the stock goes down and they're like, oh, fuck, I got to retain some of my cash. And then they fucking ditch and it just makes it 
go exponentially down further. That's kind of what was happening with Dogecoin in the past few weeks or the past week. Um, everybody's panic selling. They're panic selling because they saw Elon Musk on fucking SNL and they, what did they expect? <laughs> you know, fucking ridiculous. The, the, the thing about this, like uh, Robin Hood, I don't like, and I said it before is like, uh, I, I just, I don't, they've been doing shady shit when like there's ma when people are uh, coordinating to make massive moves and it's actually illegal what they do. And I, they're in a, uh, I think they just, I saw on the news that they're going to be in, uh, they're getting sued because of it. Because uh, specifically Dogecoin like was just fucking skyrocketing and they fucking shut down the ability to trade. And maybe this would happen one time, but they do this habitually with crypto specifically. Um, they shut down any ability to, trans to, to trade crypto on there because... People on the internet will talk to each other and go, okay, now buy a bunch of fucking thing. And they buy and then fucking somebody sees the feed or whatever, or they, they see that it's going crazy on Robin Hood. They're like, shut it down. And they're like, oh, scheduled maintenance. Like, are you fucking retarded? Like in the past, like in the stock market, maybe you could get away with it when there was no internet. But these days, anybody committing any sort of fucking crimes or whatever on the internet, you're probably going to get caught. It's impossible to get away with shit. You know what I mean? Like, maybe you shouldn't have fucking accepted fucking Dogecoin uh, if you're not going to let it just trade freely. It's fucking bullshit. So, like, for me, like, Robinhood, uh, it's it's kind of like I've got TD Ameritrade and uh, Webull and other things, but I just don't like how Robinhood has been fucking stifling the ability to trade freely. If it's going to shoot to the fucking moon, if it's going to go to $1,000, let it fucking happen. I understand that there's there's an issue with cash flow. Like, you know, on any given day with that amount of money, like it's, they try to deny it, but you can just read through all the bullshit. There's a cash flow issue when it comes to it because I don't know exactly how it works because I'm not really that smart about the stock market, but they have to send, the, the exchanges have to send money or whatever to the actual companies or something, however that fucking works. I don't really fucking know, but, um, so don't listen to me. Uh, maybe somebody comment about it or whatever. That's smart about it. But Robin hood, it appears like whenever there's an issue with like overbuying or o under or overselling, it just seems like they've stifled the shit and they're, it's like controlling it. I don't get it. Like let the fucking shit fucking shoot through the moon. And then people make a shit ton of money. There's people that lose money. It's all, from what I understand, it's free and clear. People are, especially with crypto, maybe stocks is a different thing because you got to like offer the stocks for somebody to buy. They have to buy it and you have to trade like that. It has to be facilitated through an exchange. Well, crypto is completely different. It's peer to peer. So if I go, I want to sell this, there's somebody else that fucking grabs that shit up. And, or there's a bunch of people that grab that shit up for me. Say I'm like have 10,000 shares of, of crypt, whatever specific coin, not doge or whatever. Um, and I go, here's 10,000 coins. There's probably enough people out there that have 10,000 that demand 10,000 coins and they get it from all over the place. It's peer to peer. So essentially you don't really need an exchange. It just facil facilitates the transaction. It's like eBay facilitating your sale of a dildo to fucking Margaret down the road. And she's bidding on it. And they're in a, her and a fucking Margaret and Catherine are in like a vicious eBay battle over your dildo that you were, that you used, you know? And they're like, well, it's, it's, she put, you know, she's got a reserve bid of $3 because it's literally been used. It's kind of broken in half. You can see some of the fucking, uh, the fucking uh, vaginal fluid on there, just dried and crusted because you know, Gertrude doesn't clean that shit off. And so, you know, she puts it on there and she's like a reserve of three ninety nine, and fucking, then they have a battle war because they're like, we know she gets off to that shit. And so they battle and, you know, Margaret wins because she's a dirty old whore and she bid $5. She got Gertrude's fucking dildo. And, and so eBay will take a little bit out of that and facilitate the trade. Well, crypto is completely fucking different. It's peer to peer. Um, so uh, apps like Coinbase, those are fucking fantastic. They do take a little bit, but they don't take like, 
They don't go, hold up, I gotta look and make, oh, put the money down and go like this, oh, make sure everybody's right, and then eventually give it to it. It's like an immediate transaction. So anyway, that's uh, that's how dildos re- relate to crypto and fucking stocks. I think, and I, I mean that because Robinhood kind of, I look at it as a dildo. It's kind of, it's too trendy. It's too, I don't like how they stifle fucking, uh, stifle people from just fucking shooting that shit to the mood. Dogecoin right now would be over a dollar, I'm convinced. I'm convinced it would be over a dollar if they didn't shut that shit down. If it turns off a lot of people. And I think they trade the most. I think they I think uh Robinhood tr- uh, passes the most crypto most uh Dogecoin than anybody else. But game over when when fucking uh Coinbase comes online. Then that's that makes it real. When Coinbase takes fucking Doge when they're supporting Dogecoin that's when fucking Dogecoin becomes real. And then you can fucking trade. You can pay for beers. Your buddy gives you a blowjob and you owe him five bucks for that. You know, Gertrude sells her dildo. You can pay her with fucking uh, Dogecoin. She just got to scan your QR code in your unique wallet. Uh, it's good. Um, I can't wait for it. Um, I have sold some of my Dogecoin. I've made a pretty fucking profit. Um, and so... I am a part of the Doge army. I'm one of those people that hodls, holds, and um, but I have sold a little bit because, um, like JG Wentworth, it's my money and I need it now. You know. So I'm not gonna get into too much of the next topic that I've written down on my magic notebook, but June first. I'm going to propose this question to you guys, you girls, you alien life forms that are here. Next month, the CIA, the fucking government is supposed to have full disclosure. This was part of the initial COVID relief package that Trump uh, put out there. Uh, full disclosure of UFOs from the CIA and the FBI. What are your predictions on that? I'm interested to hear. Um, comment below in whatever platform you're listening on. DM me on Instagram or Facebook. Let me know what you think about what's going to happen with this fucking full disclosure. I'm super interested. Although it seems like it's fallen off the radar quite a bit. A lot of people aren't talking about it. June 1st is full disclosure for fucking UFOs. Uh, and maybe they'll use it for a distraction or something. And hopefully, even if they do, I'll be excited to hear about it. Uh, I will say this, though. I just spit on my notebook. Um, I will say this. Um, I don't think they're going to talk about alien life. Like they're not going to sit there and be like, will the tall grays do this to people or the fucking white, the tall whites or the fucking lizard people or anything like this. The fucking, the dick footed fish people of Virginus B. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think they're just going to fully acknowledge there's fucking, uh, otherworldly vehicles here. And they're just like, they've been saying, they've been talking about it for the past year. Now, uh, it could change everything. It could fucking change everything if they release real type of information, but they won't. I I doubt they will. And if you look at like the Black Vault uh, CIA documents, like the thousands of documents that I've looked at a few and then my brain kind of went, uh, like there is uh, a lot of redaction in some of that shit. A lot of it's Russian. Um, uh, and, and I just don't feel they're going to be releasing that much to us. And if they do, it's going to be redacted as fuck. Uh, I think maybe Fox News will talk about it. like, And the New York Post. New York Post will fucking talk about it. Um, but one thing's for sure, the, the National Enquirer used to put out fucking dope, fire-ass fucking articles about aliens. Maybe that will be released that they were actually telling the truth. So, what are your predictions? That's my prediction. I think it's going to be anticlimactic. I think uh, they're just going to hold on to it. I think, I think uh, they use some of the release of UFO stuff to distract everybody. That's what I think. So now we're going to get into, uh, without an accurate segue, uh, acceptable segue into the next fucking, the future of this podcast... We're going to go over some fucking uh, listener suggested topics of uh, of conversation they want me to go over. I've looked at most of them and they're super fucking ridiculous. A lot of these are from somebody I know. 
one of the people that have been on this podcast before that knows exactly what I do with this uh, with this fucking podcast. So I'm <laughs> uh, it's gonna be. I'm not gonna say who sent them. Shout out to Mark Manning from the podcast. Um, but I'm gonna fucking talk about some of the shit if my phone works. So let's get into it. There's been a few submissions by people, uh, a lot by one person, but. So this person asks, uh, when I put up the suggestion box, it was like, hey, send me some suggestions for topics. This person has a whole bunch of them, and I'm just going to go over them because some of them are really funny. I had to hit that person up. I had to hit up that person and be like, what do you mean by this one? I don't even understand. Like, do you want me to talk about it, or are you just saying this thing exists? Ah. I believe my skull fucking thing is falling apart or it might be a hole in my lip. Um, so uh, the question came up, is it unrealistic to build a, a 2000 square foot furnished house from Legos? And, you know, I haven't thought about any of these questions. This is just straight out of the brain, the old brain nugget. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to explain this. If you build, and again, I'm just thinking about this off the cuff. All of these are off the cuff. And to be honest, I ain't got no cuffs because I'm wearing a fucking short sleeve hoodie, bitch. Fashion. Um, is it unrealistic to build a 2,000 square foot furnished house from Legos? And I'm wondering right away. I'm wondering about why the square footage? Why the choice of 2,000? If you're going to make a fucking Lego house, you're going to make a Lego mansion. Uh, make it bigger. Is it unrealistic to build a 2,000 square foot furnished house from Legos? Uh, and then I have another question. Are the Is the furnishing made of Legos as well? Also, which direction are all the Legos pointed? Because you can't have Legos pointed up. You're going to have to wear fucking flippy floppies. You're going to have to wear a shoe of some sort in the house not sanitary to walk around in shoes all the time right now i've got no shoes on i got the feets i got the foots while well, you know underneath this desk um i is it unrealistic i don't think anything's unrealistic in that regard you could definitely build a 2000 square foot lego house especially if you got like super glue and you keep all that shit together i think the problem lies in which way the legos are pointed which you would naturally think that they're pointed straight up but then if you don't if you walk around the house with no shoes, you're going to be walking on a bunch of Legos. So what hurts, what hurts more a pile of Legos that are broken apart or Legos that are standing up. So the fucking top parts, the little bumps on the top, does that hurt? What hurts more? I don't think it's unrealistic. It's like how long are you going to live there? And what's the value of that? Like, does the value of a 2000 square foot house coincide with the current housing market? which is a seller's market, not a buyer's market. I just don't know. That's a hard question. Thank you, though. Thank you for that submission. Uh, the next question coming in is, what can I do to shut up my neighbor's tiny yapping dog? Wait, what can I do to shut my neighbor's tiny yapping dog up? Um, that, that is a tough question. Um, you could go, I would say you could go and talk to them. Uh, you can go and talk to them and say your little fucking tiny yapping dog needs to shut the fuck up. Um, I don't got an answer for that, like a really great answer off the top of my head. I think uh, you could break its fucking neck, but you shouldn't. You know, you shouldn't break its fucking neck. You could break its fucking neck, but don't break its fucking neck. You could, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff that I'm not going to get into. I think this is a loaded question. I don't want to answer. Um, don't, I, I, you know... Make friends with the tiny yapping dog. Maybe give him a little treat or something. Make him happy. Maybe it's you. Maybe you got sensitive ears. Stay in your house. Stay in your house. Don't worry about that tiny yapping dog. Um, what The next question is, what would it be like if people grew antlers starting tomorrow? First question, why does it have to be tomorrow? Could be any day. But if they grew antlers tomorrow, I think it'd be an interesting spectacle. I'd be like, this is the exact face I would make, and you got to watch the, the videos to understand. I'd be like, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening? Um, 
And that depends. If I'm growing antlers and I'm like, fuck, what's coming out of my fucking head? And then I look, I'm like, you got it too? <laughs> and then I look around and I was like, everybody's growing antlers. What the fuck? You know, one of the weird things that I think we'd all have to get used to of that is when uh, the velvet is there and you're scraping it off on trees. You're like, God, my fucking head is itchy. You know, like when your head's itchy, if you were wearing a hat a lot or something like that, and you're like, fuck, and it feels good. You know, and then like the same thing, you're like walking up to trees, you're like, hold on, Jeffrey. And you're like walking over, you're like, I'm gonna run. you fucking like, ah! and you're scraping off the skin, and you're like screaming. Um, I think that's what it would be like. It would be like that. <laughs> Best guess. I don't really know, but that's why you'd have to take a, you know, people do used to take smoke breaks. You'd be like, I'd have to take a fucking, uh, whatever that is called when they're fucking scraping their antlers against fucking trees and stuff. Next question. One extremity has to go completely numb for what is it? It has to go complete. Oh, one extra. It's hard when there's multiple lines, lines, there's no commas or anything. One extremity has to go completely numb for life. What do you choose? Well, it's tough because if you hurt any part of your body, you're going to be like, it hurts when I do this. And like that part hurts. It's like every part of you touches something, whether you know it or not. So if I'm thinking about what part goes numb and it has no, I guess it would be an organ or something because you don't feel your organs. But if you're tired, extremity, extremity, fuck. I'm trying to see because I got some numbness. I think maybe this part, like the fucking forearm or something. Like, do you really need to feel shit with your forearms? Or is is this question saying is your full fucking extremity like it aren't like there's your cock and balls your fucking nipples your maybe the nipples that's an extremity I'm calling it my nipples I don't give a fuck if I feel them in fact it's inconvenient when they get sensitive and whatnot so nipples but also like if I could if I could walk my feet I would you know it's hard maybe my pinky I don't need my fucking pinky next question. Do you think albino midgets exist like real life goblins? Well, that's a little rough. What? <laughs> yeah, I think albino midgets exist. You don't really see them though. Um, I don't know the correlation between like with real life goblins. Do I think that real life goblins exist? I'm, I think there's full grown people that are fucking goblins. In fact, I've called some goblins. I've called people specifically gargoyles. I think gargoyles exist. I don't know why I call them that. I'm like, I think it's like a term for a really fucking hideous person. Um, albino midgets. I'm sure there's an albino midget. <laughs> so next question. Your confidence level in killing, butchering, killing, butchering, and cooking a wild pig. Okay. This is a, this is a good question. And I think I can answer this correctly. Um, killing, I could do it. Butchering. I'd fucking destroy that shit. I am, I have uh I have uh I have butchered several multiple animals um in survival situations, um even animals I've hunted. I'm not good at it. Um as far as cooking the wild pig, I think I'd be horrible at it. I think people would get sick because I've heard you can put fire like you can put fire to a fucking wild pig. Uh, and you can cook it, but wild pigs. And speaking of which I'm in Arkansas, there's a lot of fucking pigs here. Um, they got worms and shit. So I think the other question is after cooking the fucking wild pig, would people get sick? And I think 100% <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I'm good at killing shit. Not so much at the other part. I, you know, I just don't know enough about the butchering part. I just feel like you like rip shit off. Like when I got a like when I got rabbits, I just was like pulling limbs off and shit. I was like cutting through it with a fucking <laughs> ripping off limbs and cooking that. Cooked the rabbit fine. Nobody got sick, but I think a pig is a little bit different. Okay, this is the one that I was I hit him up. I was like, "What the fuck does it, you want me to talk about? Like what is this a topic of conversation?" Uh this this is uh the skin that hangs off of old people's chins and necks. And that's all it says. It doesn't say anything specific about what he's fucking talking about. But I guess in the spirit of the professional podcast and me uh, 
and me as a person and what I can do with these fucking things uh, in my brain, I I'll just talk about it. <laughs> Let me get a sip of beer. This is going to be a good one. I find it very odd, the, the, the part specifically, the fucking how it's... It's usually like your esophagus is right here in the center. But then it's like, I feel like my neck's tight and I'm never going to like get this part where like skin just gr just grows extra around the rest of my fucking neck and shit and has to slide down the fucking sides of my fucking head and neck until it's like bleh, gravity's so long that hard, like pulling so hard that it pulls over two flaps. It's two fucking flaps that go around the fucking side of your esophagus. Now, no, mind you, the fucking center esophagus is completely clear, like, it's completely taut. The rest of it is like, you could have the smoothest skin on the side, but then these old motherfuckers got these two flappy flaps, and they're fucking, they're fucking just hanging there. They're fucking hanging! What are they hanging for? It always reminds me of fucking two beefy fucking vagina lips just fucking Ehh! And so like it begs the question could you fuck the old people's necks? If I spit on it a little bit Could I put fucking put my penis inside of those flaps and how would it feel would it feel very much like a human vagina? That's that's what my question is after this topic of discussion because there's no guidance. There's no statement that guides me into the discussion. It just says the skin that hangs off of old people's chins and neck. And here, here's the other part. Does the woman neck skin feel the same as the man neck skin? Would I be able to tell like if I was in a dark closet and there was just an old person hanging out in there? And they're all fucking hot and bothered, but their nether regions don't work. And they're like, I'm super horny. I'm super old. I need you to fuck my fucking neck skin. And, but you, you know, you just, you're like, I can't tell if you're man or woman because you have a very gruff voice. You know, the furry fur chin on that you have could be an old lady that hasn't shaved. She hasn't shorn her fucking old person chin. You know, old people get that little furry, you know, the... <laughs> Not by the hair of my hair chin chin. <laughs> they have the the fucking chinny chin chin going on, and uh, and so like you can't tell. So like you get you know maybe their voice sounds the same. Maybe they're fucking they got the hairy chin chin, and you fucking stick your your fucking uh, smooth cock inside of that, and you're like ah, what would it feel like? I've never fucked an old person neck gobbler before, but I just wonder if the man feels the same and the woman feels the same because they're all frail and shit. And then, like I said, they got the fucking hairy chin chin. Who knows? I don't. If you've done this before, this exact scenario, please leave a comment below and tell me if fucking old people vagina neck skin feels just like a human vagina. And is there a difference between man and woman, old man skin? Old man and old woman skin against your penis. Anyway, kids, um, I, I really I know this was a worthwhile journey for you these past fucking uh, little bit of time we've been together. This almost an hour of, of me and you alone in a closet fucking old people necks. I know it was worthwhile and I know it was important to you to hear this. And I know that you're all excited to be here. I know that there's more of these kind of episodes to come and maybe more of you coming when there's old people necks around, you know, you get a little bit of excited. You're like, Oh man, that's, I, that episode, episode 81 has affected me deeply because now I get aroused when I see a big flappy old person neck, you know, I've given this gift to you. I've given this gift to you. If I've done anything in my life, I've given you the gift that you now get aroused around old people flappy necks. And um, and I, I'm glad I could give that to you. I, I'm if I haven't done much in my life, but I at least tonight I've given you this fucking this gift, and hopefully you use it to better humanity. Unlike what I did with the, this episode, I added I had plenty of things I could have done with this episode, and I chose what I chose. And now I have to deal with the consequences of that. So 
Thank you, girls and guys, for being here and listening to me ramble about nonsense. And there's more to come because I really enjoy these episodes and I appreciate those of you that do too. Uh, and apparently I'm going through puberty right now. So uh, if you do believe in this podcast, if you su- if you support this podcast, you could subscribe to this podcast and I would appreciate this. You could also go to patreon.com slash violent professional. Support us there by donating as little as a dollar and getting hidden, hidden secret content and episodes released early because of special treatment and whatnot. You give me money, I give you episodes early. You get this episode early. You get hidden bonus content. You get secret deals. Two for one special fucking old people next in the closet. Get that special deal. Use code VIOPRO at checkout of oldpeoplenext.com. And with that, have a have a fucking wonderful day or night or wherever the fuck you are. Have a wonderful fucking have a wonderful, wonderful day and fucking night and fucking work whatever Um, and I appreciate you for being here I truly do and we'll see you on the next episode of the Bomb Professional Podcast peace